Well, good morning, Coastal Community Church. How you guys do? It already sounds like you're doing great. Good to see you guys this morning. I love a rowdy little crowd. Can you guys help me welcome everybody that's watching online and at our Lighthouse Point location? We love you guys. We are excited that you are joining us today. Well, I have the amazing privilege of getting to close out this amazing series. How many of you guys have enjoyed this series, Advance? Man, I know that it's been challenging me in some places in my life and just kind of pushing me forward. And so this is the last week. And next week, we start a brand new series called My Joy is My Job. Now, I know that, you know, it's going to be good. You, you, you just want to show up. Trust me. It's going to be challenging but encouraging all at the same time. Well, you know, this whole series, Advance, has been built around this verse, actually in Philippians 3, where Paul is talking, and he's saying, I press on towards the high calling in which God has called me to, but he says, forgetting what is behind me, I press on towards what is ahead. And this has been kind of the theme of this series is, is movement, is moving forward, is advancing in this year. It's a word that God's given us for our church, but I also feel like collectively as a church, he's calling all of us to move forward and to advance and to not stay where we've been for maybe a long time, maybe a day, a week, months, years. I don't know what it's been for you, but this is a year of advancement. And so as I was thinking about this verse, I, I started to study what was happening in Paul's life at this time. And it was really interesting. So Paul is actually writing this letter saying, I press on, I forget what is behind me, I press on towards the future. He's actually writing this letter from a Roman prison. And he's chained to a guard, but yet he's got this mentality and this mindset of I'm not gonna, I'm gonna leave behind all of these things and I'm gonna press forward. Now, what's interesting is Paul has had a life full of challenges. So Paul has been shipwrecked multiple times at this point. He's been bitten by venomous snakes and survived. He's been beaten and left for dead, and he's been imprisoned multiple times, yet somehow this man sitting in prison goes, I press on. Yeah. Yeah. Paul, do you know you're chained up in prison? Like, how can you press on? And I think some of us need to get this attitude of Paul that regardless of my circumstances, regardless of my situation, regardless of what has happened to me, I'm going to take this attitude in this mentality of going, I got to forget what's happening to me. I got to forget all of these things and press on towards what God has for me in this future. Now, I think it's really interesting that, that Paul is saying these words, and you know why he's saying, I think, that why he's saying that he has to forget what is behind him is because he has had a life that has been full of difficulty. And I think when we've had, how many of you guys have had difficult moments? Maybe you need a breakthrough in your life right now. Maybe you feel chained up and there's difficulty in life. I think Paul is saying this because it's really easy when we face a lot of difficulty in life to be scared to move forward because what if something bad happens again? If I believe that God has something good for me, what, what if I face something different? And I think Paul is trying to take this attitude of going, I gotta forget all of the, the shipwrecks and the beatings and the imprisonment, and I have to look forward to maybe something greater and better that God has for my life. And what I love about Paul is no matter what his situation, he uses it to be a platform for God to continue to move him forward and inspire and encourage other people because it's an attitude and a mindset that he has where he's not looking at his circumstances, He's taking on an attitude of, I will move forward. And so what is it this year that we need to advance in? What is it this year that we have to move forward in? And, and, and so actually two weeks ago, we, we were coming out of prayer and fasting. And God had challenged me a lot during 21 days of prayer and fasting. I had been reading the Bible every day and doing this Bible study method called SOAP. And I was getting so much out of God's word. And I remember reading this one passage of scripture and God challenging me so deeply in this area of my life. I remember going to TJ and said, man, 
God showed me this verse and he was like showing me all of these points and man, I think this could be a message one day. And he goes, well, hey, how about you speak it next week? (laughs) That's what's wrong with being married to a pastor. (laughs) And you share all the things God's doing in your life and then you end up on a platform, which I'm, I'm grateful for. But God was showing me some things, and as I was thinking about these verses that God had showed me, I remembered back to one Thanksgiving, and we were hosting Thanksgiving at our house. We're having a bunch of friends and family over, and TJ comes to me, and he goes, hey, I want to cook this dessert recipe. Now, TJ does not cook, so I'm like, what is, why is he coming to me and saying he, he's like, it's called pumpkin dump. (laughs) Ugh pumpkin dump. He's like, no, my mom made it. It's so amazing. And I just, I want, I want to make it. And and basically it's a simple recipe. You just get all these ingredients, you dump it together. Then you dump cake mix on top with some butter and you put it in the oven. Super simple. So he's like, I got the recipe from my mom. I'm going to make this, this recipe. It's going to be great. And so he dumps all the ingredients together. He puts it in the oven. It smells great. Comes out of the oven, we have dinner. Dinner is amazing. I mean, Thanksgiving dinner is like the best. That's what I live for. I'm, I love food. Yes, thank you. People are like, yeah. And so we get to dessert. I get a scoop of it. It's still nice and warm and hot. And I put it on my plate and I put it in my mouth. And I'm like, hmm. <laughs> Something doesn't taste right. I said, TJ, taste this. He goes, hmm. I said, what, what, what's wrong with it? He goes, I think I forgot to put the sugar in it. <laughs> How many of you guys know ingredients matter? Yes. The ingredients that you use <laughs> matter a lot. Can I just say something? The ingredients that we use in life, they really matter. And our life is a byproduct of the ingredients that we're using. See, some of us have a bad taste in our mouth about life right now. And I would say, what ingredients have you been using? You know, what we are consuming in our life right now is a byproduct of what we've chosen to put in. Now, yes, there's factors and difficulties and things that we face, but many times our attitude is an ingredient. Our words are an ingredient. And some of us are living out the result of the ingredients that we've used. And I want to challenge you a little bit this weekend to kind of investigate what are the ingredients that I've been using that have been giving me the life that I'm living out right now. And I think so many of us, we can have something specific that we want to make, and there's an outcome that we desire, but in order to get that outcome, we have to use the right ingredients. And so some of us are like, man, I, I want a great marriage, but the ingredients that we're putting in aren't adding up to the great marriage. It's like I've heard people say before, Well, she knows I love her. I told her on the wedding day. Well, you know the recipe needs sugar, but you have to add it in anyway. You have to use the ingredient, not just know what you need. A lot of us are saying, man, I want to advance in my career. Well, what effort are you putting into that? Are you just showing up? Or is there effort that's going into building what you want at the end of the day? Are you just hoping that it happens? Because our life, financially, we might not want, we might want one financial income, or it, financial income is great. We, we want an outcome financially, but the ingredients we're using aren't producing that. And so what are the ingredients that we're using in our life. And the Bible actually talks a whole lot about this particular subject. And I would say that probably many of us in this room have a faith or a belief that there is a God. 
And that God created the universe and that he created each and every one of us individually on purpose with a unique gifting, with a unique plan. I mean, we've all read the verse that says he formed us in our mother's womb before, you know, we were even born that he had a plan for us. So I think we all know that there's a beautiful plan or a purpose for our life. We just haven't quite figured out what the ingredients are to get it. And so this verse that stood out to me during prayer and fasting actually comes out of 2 Peter chapter 1, and it starts in verse 3, and it says this. His divine power has what? Given us everything that we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us very great and precious promises. Like God has something beautiful. He has something great. He has a promise for each and every one of us. And through them, you may participate in this divine nature, having escaped corruption of the world caused by evil desires. Basically, the ingredients we choose. 2 Peter 1, 5 through 8 continues on to say this. For this very reason... Make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, godliness mutual affection and mutual affection love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of God. Continuing on in verse 10, therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort To confirm your calling and election, for if you do these things, you will never stumble. Man, how many of you guys would like to never stumble in life? I think God's word has some great truth if we'll all kind of just lean in for a minute, because I think we would all want to advance this year. I think we would all want something different for our life, but it depends on if we look and we use the right ingredients. And if we look at this verse, if we go back to where it says, God, his divine power has given us everything that we need. And I think some of us think about that and we go, when I come into faith and I pray like, God, make me who you want me to be. God, show me what you want me to be. Create this life. I think we think that God just hands us the finished product. Right? You have faith now. I'm going to make you who you need to be. And the reality is he, he does make us who we need to be, but he doesn't just hand us the finished product. See, there is this beautiful purpose, there is this richness, there is this sweetness that God wants to bring to our life in this, but he doesn't just hand us this product. What he does, it gives us all the ingredients to create the thing that he's called us to or created us for. And this cake is beautiful, and it's sweet, and it's amazing. But the only way that we get the richness and the sweetness is if we use the right ingredients that create that life. And so I want to kind of talk to us today about using the right ingredients. And so the first thing that I want to challenge you guys in this morning is to start with the end in mind. Start with the end in mind. In order to create the richness and the sweetness of life that we also desire, we have to have a picture of what that looks like. Where do we want to be at the end of 2023? What do we want to see God do in our marriage, in our finances, in our career, in our relationship with him? What is the end result that we want to see happen? Because if we don't know what the end result is and we don't get the recipe for that end result, then we're going to just start adding in random things whenever we feel like it. It might be like, I feel, feel like pickles today. Well, pickles don't go in the cake. And I think what's happening for a lot of us is we don't know where we're going. We don't know the recipe that we're trying to put together for our lives. So whenever we feel like something, we're just throwing it in. And it's creating something that is bland and not nourishing to our life. And we're looking around going, what is going on? And the reality is, is you don't know where you're going. And I think we have to start 
with the end in mind. It's so interesting. In verse 8, it says this, for if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from what? Being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of God. Well, well, if you think, I don't want an ineffective or unproductive life, do you? I don't want an ineffective or unproductive marriage or financial situation. I want an effective and productive life. And what this is saying is if you want an effective and productive life, if you start with the end in mind, then you know what ingredients to use. But many of us don't know what that effective and productive life is that we so desire. What does that look like for you? Where do you, again, where do you want to be at the end of this year? What do you want to see different in your life? Because if you don't start with the end in mind, you'll just add anything into the equation. And here's what I know. A lot of you guys, you're working hard in life. You're, you're, you're putting a lot of energy into life, but you have no idea where you're going. And you're mixing and you're mixing and you're adding and you're adding. And there's a lot of energy going into it, but what's the goal? What's the end result? And listen, I know it can be scary sometimes to sit down and write out a hope or a dream or a plan of where we want to be at the end of 2023 because what if I dream or what if I imagine what it could be like or what if I write out this goal or this purpose and what if it doesn't happen? But here's the thing. There's, There's this saying that says, if you aim for the moon, even if you'll miss, you land among the stars. And I think when we can sit down and we can start with the end in mind and go, where do I want to be? Then even if we don't make that mark this year, we'll be closer. We will have made progress. We will have advanced in some way. So what is the end goal at the end of 2023? Then number two, you have to commit to the process. And this is all about the ingredients that we use. See, if we go back to verses 5 through 7, it says this. For this very reason, basically he's saying for this very reason, that's there for a reason. He's saying for this very reason, and that reason is I have this perfect plan. I have this sweetness for your life. And so for this sweetness that I have for your life, here's what you have to do. You have to make every effort. Now, here, here, make every effort. I want this to stick in your head because a lot of us are not putting the effort into adding the right ingredients. And this is saying every opportunity, every moment, I want you to be looking for those ingredients. I want you to make every effort. It says this, to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge. And he he goes through all of these things. And so what he's saying is you have to add the right ingredients. There's a process to what I want to do in your life. There's a process to reach the richness and the plan and the purpose and the outcome that I have for you. There's a process that you have to use to get there. And here's what I know. The life God has for us doesn't happen in a day. It happens daily. It happens daily in what we choose to put in so that we can get the sweetness and the richness in life that we so desire. You know, during 21 days of prayer and fasting, every year, I don't know if any of you guys do this, I do this every year, is I ask God for a word, kind of like a focus for that year, kind of like starting with the end in mind, like, God, what do you want to do? How do you want to grow me in this year? And I remember praying about this word, like, God, what word do you have for me? And this word came into my mind, and I was like, no, God, that's not it. That's not really spiritual. And I kept praying, like, Lord, give me a word. What do you want to see in me this year? What do you want to grow in me this year? And I heard the word again. And I'm like, God, I I just don't think that's it. I kept praying. And then I heard it again. And it was this word, daily. I was like, God, what it would, daily? It's kind of weak. And here's what he, he, he basically told me, the same thing I told you. 
The life I've ha- I have for you doesn't happen in a day. It happens in what you do daily. And so, Shayla, if you want to be a little more spiritually mature, like the word you want, then daily, I need you to open this up, and I need you to read it. And I need you to uncover the things that I want to speak over your life. Daily. Here's what I need you to do. I need you to daily encourage someone. I need you to daily Invest in your relationship with your husband because if you want your marriage to be different at the end of 2023, it matters what the investment that you make daily. Financially, you want to be at a different place? Well, Shayla, it matters what you do with your finances daily and what you spend and how you invest daily. It's the ingredients that I'm choosing to use daily because it is a process to get to where God wants us to be in the sweetness and the richness of everything that he has for us. And so in this passage of scripture, he actually gives some ingredients. And these ingredients can go, they, they are the foundation of life. If you want to live the sweetness and the richness and the plan and the purpose that God has for your life, he lays out the ingredients right here and says, this is something every single person needs in order to, to live the fruitfulness that I have for their life. And so what he says in this verse, he says, make every effort to add to your faith. Basically, he said, there is the faith element. This is the foundation on which we grow spirit. Spiritually. So there, we have to have a faith first that believes that God has a purpose and a plan and we believe that we are part of those vessels that he wants to use to accomplish those things and that we believe that there is a savior, that there is hope, that there is eternity. Faith is a foundation of that and you need the ingredient and the basic of faith. So he says, make every effort to add to your faith goodness. Now he's saying, take a little goodness, and I, I, I chose milk. I mean, milk, milk is an ingredient that we use in so many different things. And do you know what, you know what goodness is? It's actually this idea of virtue. It's character. It's I am the same person no matter where I go. My yes is my yes. I am, I am, a, I am good with so many people. I, I have, they, people say they're a good person. And yes, that is the start of it. But it's this idea of character, and my words and my actions match, and no matter where I go, I'm the same person. I, that's why I was thinking about with milk. When you add milk to a recipe, you might add it to the cake recipe or your coffee or your cereal. Like it, Everywhere it goes, it's useful for a purpose that God wants to use it for. And so he's saying what you need to do is to add to your faith goodness. You need to be a character-driven person. And maybe this is something that, that we need to grow in. And God's saying, you increase this aspect of your life so we add goodness. And then he says, to goodness, you need to add knowledge. Now, what knowledge is, it's an understanding of what God thinks and values. So yes, you're a good person and you have character, but then we have to add on to that this knowledge of what God values so that we can begin to display that in our life. And that's why I'm like, when you add eggs to something, it, it kind of binds everything together. And that's exactly what God does when that knowledge of God, it begins to bind us together so that we know what those values are and we can begin to display them in our life because we can be a good person, but if we don't have the knowledge of what God values, then we're going to miss the mark. And so he's saying you start with faith and then you add this goodness and then you add knowledge and then you add self-control. Uh-oh. I chose Jello for self-control because, man, it can feel a little wobbly, <laughs> but you got to hold it together. This is the ability to lead yourself, and I think this is an area that trips a lot of us up because I can be a good person and I can know what God values, but when the temptation is there, it's why addiction is rampant in our societies. It's why 50% of marriages end in divorce many times because of an affair. Because we know what God values, but do we have the self-control in the moment to be able to fight off those things 
that are tempting us and God's going, I need you to increase in your measure of self-control so that you can get to this because being uncontrolled and just kind of adding in everything that you want, I feel like this is not getting you to the sweetness and the richness that I've planned. You're adding pickles to the cake. And some of us, this might be the thing that we need to increase quite a bit in this year is self-control. And then he says, add to self-control perseverance. Now, perseverance is the ability to patiently stick to what is right. And I think this comes after self-control because we've worked through self-control, but now we're still going to face the temptation and we have to continue to walk through those temptations, to walk through those difficulties, to persevere when it gets hard so we can get to the other side. And I chose the oil that goes in the cake because sometimes the oil helps us get through stuff, right? Right? And some of us need to develop a little bit of perseverance when things get hard that we don't just give up and give in and throw in the towel and I can't do this. And we never reach this because we haven't developed the quality of perseverance in our life. God's going, maybe you need to increase your measure of perseverance. And then he says, add to the perseverance godliness. Pick some strawberries. What godliness is, it's a spirit-filled, spirit-led lifestyle that reflects the Lord. So when we have self-control and we have perseverance and then we add godliness, and this is really the things that God has done on the inside of us beginning to reflect on the outside of us and how we live. Our words change. Man, I I hear people all the time that come to church and whatever, but man, they like sound like a sailor. And I'm like, maybe we need to grow in a little bit of the godliness so that some of those things begin to reflect in the words that we use, in the attitudes that we take, in how we talk about other people. And the reason I chose strawberries because I think strawberries are so, you can cut them up and you can put them in the cake and they're inside of you, but then you can slice them up and put them on the outside and they're so pretty, it reflects what's on the inside reflects on the outside. And some of us might need to increase our measure of godliness in our life this year to allow the things that God is depositing inside of us to reflect on the outside of us. And then he says, add to godliness Mutual affection. And this is a lifestyle that's warm, relational, caring. This is the icing on the cake. And you know what's so interesting about mutual affection is this word mutual. Mutual affection, that means somebody else feels affectionate about us back. And can I tell you something? It's easy to love people that love you. Right? This is about our friends, our family, you know, people that, that we do life with. But here's, here's where some of us need to grow in mutual affection. is because some of us, it's easier to be nice to the people at work than it is to our family. Yeah. And maybe we need to grow in our mutual affection for our kids or our spouse or our friends and show a little grace with our words and how we speak to them and how we love them and showing affection to them. And God's going, if you want to see the sweetness and the richness of your life, you have to grow in your mutual affection towards one another for your friends, your family, your your faith community. We need to have a different attitude about how we approach those relationships and let it be honoring and life-giving. And not just be like, well, they know my heart. No, show your heart. And then to top it all off, the last ingredient he tells us to use is love. This is the sprinkles. We go around just sprinkling love everywhere. This is the highest quality that enables us to sacrificially give to others. And what love is, is about loving the people you don't like, loving the people that don't believe the same way you do, act the same way you do, vote the same way you do, have the mentality that you do. This is showing God's love to people who are nothing like you. 
Mutual affection is about the people that have mutual affection for, towards you. Love is about a lost, dying world that doesn't see things the way that you do, but is seeing Jesus through you. You know, John Maxwell says this. He says, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And there are people in this world that are lost, that are broken, that are dying, and they need to see the love of Christ reflected through us. And so he gives us all of these ingredients, and I can imagine you guys are like, that's a lot of ingredients, and I got a lot to work on. Because there's a lot of those ingredients that I see that I'm like, I need to grow in that, I need to grow in that, I need to grow in that. Well, let me, let me challenge you in something. Pick one. Pick one and go, this year, my goal is to grow in self-control. That would be a good one, wink, wink. <laughs> my goal is to grow in love or in goodness, or in knowledge, whatever that thing is, pick one and go, I'm going to grow in this because I am adding to the picture at the end of the day and the sweetness and the richness of the purpose that God has for me. And while I might not have it all, I'm building it. And then the final thing is this. Number three, you have to endure the heat. Now here's the thing about life. It is not a matter of if you're going to go through difficulty, it's when you're going to go through difficulty. We are all going to face the heat no matter what ingredients we've put in. But here's the thing. The heat is going to give you the final product that you're going to consume, and those ingredients will have mattered. And so we're going to go through the fire no matter what, no matter what ingredients you've used. But at the end of the day, am I going to be able to consume the richness of the ingredients that God has placed in my life that he's already given me, that he's already enabled me to use? Am I going to have used those ingredients so that when I come out of the heat, I go, man, that was worth it. Man, I can see, God, what you were doing in me. And man, God, I can see the life that you were creating in me and that now I get to partake of that is sweet, that is amazing, that also nourishes other people and gives sweetness away to other people. Or, or am I going through the fire and on the other side of it, I'm like, this tastes nasty. And what I'm consuming right now, I'm not enjoying. And I can imagine that there's some of you in this room that you're sitting here and you're listening and you're going, man, Shayla, I've been using the wrong ingredients. I can taste it in my life. But here's the amazing news about God. Is he's going, if you have a foundation of faith, I've given you everything that you need. So it doesn't matter what ingredients you've used up to this point. Listen, start from scratch. And here's everything that you'll need. And all you have to do is just say, God, I surrender my recipe, I surrender my ingredients, I haven't used the right ones, God, and I choose today to begin to use the right ingredients that's gonna produce the life that I so desperately want. And so with every head bowed and every eye closed, maybe there's some of you in this room that you've been using the wrong ingredients. And your life is a, is a product of that. And I actually have some pretty good news because there's a whole lot of people in this room that might be living the sweetness and the richness of God's best for their life. But here's what I can guarantee you. You're in the presence of a whole lot of people that we've all used wrong ingredients at one point. And God has redeemed that and he's given us faith to believe that there can be a different life and that can be your life too. And so you're in the company of a lot of broken people that get to choose to start putting in the right ingredients. And so maybe if you're out there, if you've never chosen to enter into a relationship with a God that has a beautiful plan, a sweetness and a richness to life, a peace, a hope, a joy, if you've never had that experience with God and today you're saying, Shayla, 
I want that relationship. Maybe it's for the very first time or the first time in a long time. I would love to pray for you. So on the count of three, if you'll just slip up your hand. One, two, three. Yes, I see you. One, yes, I see you. Two, three, four. Yes, thank you. Anybody else? If you'll just pray your, in this heart, in your heart as I pray this out loud. Jesus, today, I surrender my recipe. I surrender my plan. And I choose to accept yours. God, I lay aside all my mistakes and my failures and my shame and my disappointment and my sin and all of the ingredients I've put into my life, I put those aside. And I choose today to step into relationship with you and to pick up all the ingredients that you've given me in order to live a sweet, a satisfying life that's full of love and joy and hope and peace and all of the things that I'm so desperate for. So today I surrender my life to you and I choose to walk in your plan and your purpose. It's in Jesus' name that I pray, amen.